I want you to open your Bibles quickly tonight to Psalm 23. And I'm going to give you a little piece of what I'm preaching tomorrow, and I'm going to give you a piece tonight, a secret part tonight that I'm not going to give them tomorrow. So, shh. (laughs) Wow. Psalm 23, verses 1 through 3. The Lord, let's put it up there, and let's all read it together out loud. Let's put it up there, guys. The Lord is my shepherd... I shall not want. Keep flipping, guys. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, there's a lot of meat in there, and I was going to try to get through this in four weeks. And I'm still, I got stuck on the Lord as my shepherd last week. And I'm going to get stuck on I shall not want this week. So this might take a little while. Someone say, I shall not want. want. What an amazing promise of God. I want to take you into an understanding of a divine revelation that will bring you into a breakthrough. I want us to go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. (laughs) We are, hallelujah. (laughs) Got to fill the silence with something. (laughs) Glory. We are in a very amazing day right now. You're going to have to bring me my chalkboard. I'm just going to have to have it. I, I was going to try and not chalkboard it tonight, but I just want to speak to you by revelation. I, I have, I, I, it's why I don't advertise series a whole lot because I get so much revelation popping and I put out, you know, they send out these messages you know, and advertise the Seeker Central Churches. In week one, I'm talking about this. and week two, I'm talking about that. and week three, I'm talking about this. I have a, that, that don't work for me. I can tell you, did you all see the, the new billboard? Spiritual Warfare School of Ministry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. We got, we, we, we got it up there. Going to sit there. And it says, defeat the devil right on it. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to take him on head on. How many believe we're living in the end times? Now, God has planned. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9. You're going to have to go there from the Amplified. I'm sorry. Uh, It's already, I got like four scriptures popping in my spirit already. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9. God has planned. Everybody say God has planned. I love it that God has a plan. He has planned for the maturity of the times and the climax of the ages. I'm I'm testing them back there big time. I'm making them. I I thought you got it up there. I'm all right. Making known to us the mystery, the secret of his will, of his plan and of his purpose. And it is this, in accordance with his good pleasure, his merciful intention, which he had previously purposed and set forth in him. Next verse. That the maturity of the times and the climax of the ages to unify all things and head them up and consummate them in Christ, both things in heaven and things on earth. Everybody say God has planned. planned. He's planned for the end times. He's planned for the maturity of of the times. Now, what happens in the season 
of maturity. The season of maturity is the time in which you see the full grown manifestation of what the original seed that was intended to produce. You see the full grown manifestation of the original. When you have a harvest time, and we are in God's end time harvest time. Come on. <laughs> and God has planned for a season. For a season that's called the maturity of the times. When you go out and it's harvest time and Crops are coming in. The corn is coming in. It's in those last few weeks that you see the greatest manifestation. And it's only then that you actually see the visible representation of what the seed came from. Are you all with me on that? Because when you plant the corn seed in the ground and it first begins to rise up, that's not corn you see the stalk grow and grow that's not corn then you see the 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 the, the beginnings of the kernels begin to come out and the husk and, and 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 the cobs begin to grow but it's only at the time of maturity that you actually get to see the exact representation of what the original was now the Bible says, <laughs> God has planned for the maturity of the times and the climax of the ages. He has planned for this end time to do what? He has planned to produce a mature. Oh, my Lord. I don't know if you're going to be ready for this. How many? <laughs> somebody say this after me. Say, I am born. Of the, of the seed of Christ. See, the Bible says an incorruptible seed has been placed inside of you. You were born of the seed of Christ. Romans chapter 8. Let's go there for a moment. Hold your fingers everywhere we're going. Romans chapter... Whoo, glory to God. Shikara Mashande. Hallelujah. Beginning with verse... Let's begin with verse 19. Romans chapter 8. From the uh, King James Version. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Everybody say manifestation. manifestation. Now, put it in your spirit. The man, whoo, manna, uh, manna, it, manna, manifestation. Y'all help me. We have, we have romper room in here on Saturday. So, the, the end time manifestation. When is the greatest season of manifestation? And the season of? Come on. The season of maturity is the greatest season of manifestation. When a child begins to grow, you see him grow, grow, grow. But then we hit in the teenage years. They hit what we call is puberty. We hit a season of incredible transformation and tremendous manifestation. Right, when their body is maturing from childhood into manhood. Now, 2,000 years ago, the church of Jesus Christ was born, but it wasn't born full grown. It was born a baby. Now we're entering into the end times when what's going to happen? We're, gonna, we're hitting spiritual puberty. No, oh, no, 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 come on. We're about to suddenly start growing up. Because he's not coming back for this weak, need, wishy washy, backboneless, spineless, jellyfish, good for nothing, nipple sucking baby church. Come on. He's back coming back for a church without spot and without blemish. How is that going to be? He's coming back for a church that looks like him. Come on, we've been predestined by God to be conformed into his image. Everybody say his image. So if we're going to be conformed into his image, we've got to grow into maturity. And at that time, that's going to be the greatest season and period of manifestation. 
So all of creation is waiting earnestly for the manifestations of the sons of God. Not the manifestation of the children of God. But the manifestations of those who have grown up. Woo! Do you understand? Even the earth is begging for the Christians to grow up. Huh? But he who began a good work in us shall bring it unto completion. Come on. You're not going to have to grow yourself up. He's going to grow us up. Oh, my Lord. Now, now watch this. <laughs> verse 20. Romans 8, verse 20. For the creation was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who subjected it uh, the same in hope. Because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our bodies. See, I, I'll tell you what I believe happened. Some people say, oh, the rapture going to happen any moment. I don't believe the rapture is going to happen any moment. I'm sorry if you do. I just don't. Do you know why? Because I believe what we're going to see transpire in these end times is such a massive acceleration and manifestation of maturity and being changed into the image of God that we're going to become so much like him in this world. Come on, scriptures say, as he is, so are we in this world. Then we're going to become so much like him. We're going to be so filled with his glory. We're going to be so changed into his nature that the only thing left to happen is for us to shed off this mortal body. Come on. I don't believe the end. You're going to have to patty. If you don't patty cake tonight, that's really weak. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Woo. We're going to shed off this mortal body. We're going to shed off this limitation because we're going to be so busting with glory on the inside, so full of maturity as a body. The only thing left to happen is for Jesus to come back, split the sky open, and get us out of here. <laughs> Bible speaks of the end time church. says the weakest among them shall be as David. I mean, no, you're doing good when the weak one is David. Woo! Glory! Huh? And God says, David's a man after my own heart. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> like going to a family of giants and they say, this is Pee Wee. He's only seven foot eight and 300 pounds. How many say we're being changed into his image? This is the transformation that's taking place. Now, Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. And the disciples came to him and said to him, or came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? He said it, he answered and said to them, because it is given to you to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has, to him more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Now, let's stop there for a moment. This is very powerful. For whoever has, to him more will be given and he will have an abundance. Whoever has what? The context. Whoever has wisdom 
knowledge and revelation. You can read it also in Mark's translation. Speaks a little clearer on that. I wasn't going to stop on that point, but I have to. He said, it's been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And whoever has what? The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, to him will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Amen. Somebody say, it's God's will God. for me to have an abundance. God. Say it again. It's God's will, God's will for me to have an abundance. Amen. Now, if you think I'm going to preach just your typical prosperity message right now well you're kind of wrong but you might be right no no I'm telling you I want to share with you something that dropped in my spirit let me read the scripture and then I'll get there therefore I speak to them in parables because seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see. Now, I want you to put that, we're going to hit that tomorrow night in an incredible way. Blessed are your eyes, for they shall see. And your ears, for they hear. For surely I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and did not see it. And to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Therefore, since you have eyes to see and ears to hear, therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, ever say the word of the kingdom. Now, very important. He's referring to the word here as a seed. Whoever hears the the word of the kingdom, the seed. And I want you to do something tonight. We have always looked at this parable, the four types of soil. You know, most of you that have been in Bible or been in church for a while know this story. You had the four different kinds of soil. And we look at it as four different hearts. We have the wayside heart. We have the stony heart. We have the thorny heart, and then we have our heart. <laughs> right? The good soil. We're the good soil. I've taught that it's not just four types of heart. It's four stages that the word must pass through in everybody's life. How many know when the word comes for the first time and it's new and it's fresh, usually the first thing we're like, it's totally different than anything we're used to. In our environment, our culture, we go, yeah, I don't think so. Right? Just stolen right away. You know? And then and then then you get it. And you get it with joy and you're like, whoa, cool. But you don't know how to work it yet. Man, praise God, tithing, I got a revelation. Hallelujah. And then you tithe and then you go out and your tire blows. Come on, amen. You don't know how to work it yet. Then the third area where it all is flowing in abundance. But the cares of this world and the deceitful of riches choke it out. And then the fourth area, 30, 60, 100 fold. And we're going to talk about those. These are four different areas. I called them, I called them first when Satan stole the word from your heart. Then I called the second area, what I call the test of failures. This is the area where you, you know the word, you're excited about the word, but you haven't learned how to consistently work it yet. Come on, Amen. And you got to pass the test of failures because when persecution came, and persecution doesn't mean that somebody came and said, ooh, you nasty Christian. Persecution can simply be when a challenge came up against the word because it did not have a strong root. People gave up on it. Man, they were all fired up. That's why, that's why these preachers get out there and have to pump, pump, pump people up. Conference after conference. Believe God. Trust God. Give a big seed. Give a big seed. Give a, you know, if people really got it and lived it and all functioning, you never have to say it. Come on, amen. You wouldn't have, you'd sit to say offering time and say, we're, we're ready. We know how this thing works. Seed time and harvest. We, we came sowing already. 
Hallelujah. You don't need to spend no hour talking me into it. I'm already, I got it, brother. Come on, just take the offering. Let's lay some hands on it. Glory to God. Huh? But why? People step out. Maybe they tie for a little bit. Maybe they give a little, 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 little offering. Somebody say, well, I tried and it did. I tried it out and it didn't work. Hey, I got news for you. It was never yours to try and test it. When God said, prove me now here with it, wasn't it to say, well, I'm going to try and see. No, you just do and watch. Oh, glory to God. Come on. Come on, somebody. Woo. But so, but so it dries up. And a lot of people, they go through cycle after cycle in the test of failure. Then you get them to work. Then, oh, yeah, that is right. Then they do it. Okay, God, I'm sorry. I'm going to do it right. Then they do it for a little while. And then back again. They go through the cycle over and over and over. And most Christians I know live their life in the cycle of defeat. The test of failures. They never quite, they have short seasons where they get excited. Short seasons where it seems like something's growing. Then it just seems to fade away. Huh? Then there's a third phase. This is the phase where you actually start getting it. I mean, it starts working for you. And it's powerful. And abundance is flowing. But you got to be careful of the thorn bushes. The thorn bushes are the, are, is the junk that the enemy has already sown in your heart that never is really noticed until you get an abundance. I'm telling you, let somebody get a promotion, give somebody a title, drop a bunch of money or power in most people's hands, and you will watch an amazing, ungodly transformation. Come on, amen? Amen. Yeah. But why? Because they got some thorn bushes in them. But the thorn bushes don't become aware and into the light until the abundance hits. Now, watch what he says. Who? Uh, let me, I'm going to jump a couple of scriptures here. Verse 23, 22. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world. Now listen to me. That's not worries. That word cares there doesn't mean like, oh, the struggles and stresses of this world. That word cares there means distractions. How many times? Somebody say abundance. This is really important. How many times did God warn the children of Israel, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your land. I'm going to bless your cattle. I'm going to bless your womb. I'm going to bless it all. I'm going to bless you. Be careful lest you forget me. Stop, don't be, be, hey, watch out. There's a great danger coming, and it's called my favor and my blessing. It's called abundance. Now, I've always looked at this scripture from the standpoint, and then the 30, 60, 100 fold. I, and notice it says, the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. There is an inherent, listen to me, and I'm, you'll understand where I'm going in a moment. There is an inherent deceitfulness to wealth. If you're not careful, <laughs> it'll trip you up. But don't be afraid of it. Are you all with me on this? But if you're not careful, it'll trip you up. That's how many people we've seen fall. Come on, they get some money and bam, they just go off the rail. We see it time and time and time and time and time again. Now watch this. I've always looked at this now at the four stages that might, someone might go through in Revelation breaking forth. You got to go through the, the wayside where it was stolen. You got to go through the stony heart where you had it, you were excited, but you didn't know how to work it yet. You had to go through the place where it really starts working, but you got to make sure that as all these abundance starts flowing and miracles start happening or money starts flowing or whatever it is and all these things start happening, you don't get all wrapped up and distracted by the, by the things of this world. Come on, amen. You don't get sidetracked by the lust of things. 
And then the fourth area, then finally you get to the place where you mature, 30, 60, and 100 fold. So I've always looked at him in the individual's life, but I'm telling you, I was driving down the road just yesterday, and something jumped inside of me, and all of a sudden it's like I pulled back in a perspective of the entire world and the body of Christ. And I looked, at the, I looked at the body as one total unit and the process that God is taking the body through. Now, y'all ready for some, some heavy revy right now? Yeah. So he sowed the seed into the world. And you know what the Bible says? It tells us in Isaiah that everybody rejected him. Woo. There was the wayside. Come, come on, amen. And then people started receiving him and accepting him. And we have had 2,000 years. There's been a lot of, listen, there's been a lot of working of God, a lot of things happening, a lot of stuff stirring. But the body of Christ as a whole, as a whole, throughout eternity, has never stepped in to the totality of the abundance of the covenant of God. Come on, amen. We've struggled. Thank God for the work that has been done. Thank God for everything that's happened. Thank God for the great revivals. But as a whole, as a body, as a whole, we have not grown up into the place of the continual provision and the abundant manifestation of the glory of God to the dimension that the covenant demands. But I want to lay something in your spirit. And I could spend hours here going through scriptures to prove this. But I want to lay something in your spirit. There is unprecedented abundance coming to the body of Christ. Before Jesus comes for the body of Christ. I'm going to say that again because that was kind of pathetic. Come on. there, There is unprecedented abundance. Coming to the body of Christ before, and I'm talking abundance of miracles. I'm talking abundance of revelation. I'm talking abundance of glory. Come on. I'm talking abundance of power. I'm talking abundance of authority. I'm talking abundance of wealth. Come on. The word is going to be fulfilled. The wealth of the wicked is going to be transferred to the hands of the righteous. It ain't happened yet, but it will happen before Jesus comes back. Somebody say, it's coming. It's coming. Now, when I say that, you can go into big meetings and people will shout, oh, hallelujah, yeah, Jesus. I mean, they'll be shouting you down. But, but most of the time, they're responding to you out of your feather of the flesh. Their carnal man gets excited because now I can go out and buy a bunch of things and feed my flesh. Are y'all hearing me? And they're already, before they even get there, falling into the trap of the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. A few years ago, God woke me up in the middle or early in the morning, woke me up, said, get out your pen and write. He said, warn my people. I'm about to release unprecedented wealth into the body of Christ. And he says, it will be the greatest test they ever faced. He said, the test of success is going to be much more difficult than the test of failures. And I, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, then how does anybody survive? I felt like the disciples. Come on, remember when he said, only except you pass through the eye of a needle, right? You can't get in. And he said, well, then who can get in? Right? He said, with God, nothing is impossible. So I, I, I felt like the disciples. I said, Lord, how am I going to get in? <laughs> oh, come on, don't look. Come on, Amen. And he said, I said, how do you keep from going there? He said, stay close. He said, I was so simple. He said, you stay close. You stay close to me, I'll deal with the junk. But I want you to understand, the junk's going to come up. Hello. 
The junk's going to get manifested. When I put this on you, it's going to get manifested. It's going to be, a, there's a spotlight going to come on stuff you didn't even think you had in you. You just recognize it there. You just stay close to me and I'll go ahead and deal with it. That's why the worst thing you can do when you start getting some blessing and you start getting some natural prosperity, worst thing you can do is, is spend less time in church. Oh, man, I'm preaching good now. Come on. Oh, well, we, you know, we, we, we got all these money. Now we go take all these extra vacations and we got to go run do this and we got a boat. Now we got to go down boat now because it was such a beautiful day today. The Lord's taking me to some still waters and green pastures. God, Lake Dallas. There it is. Oh, beautiful. I just... I'm out there with Jesus and my cores. <laughs> Come on. He said, you got to stay close. Now, I'm telling you what the Lord was speaking to me. And, and I really feel like it was dropping in my heart. He showed me. He says, I'm going to take the whole body through this process. And I have to, in order to get my body to a full maturity, which is the season of manifestation, which is the season of reproduction, which is where the 30, 60, 100 fold really takes place, I must take my body through the test of success. Are y'all hear me? I must take my body through the abundance. So I'm going to pour it out. And I'm going to, oh, glory to God. I'm going to pour out my abundance. Not only to get the end time work done, but I'm also going to use it as a refining fire to purify my people. Yeah. Oh, my Lord Jesus. Why? He's training us to reign. I said he's training us to reign. We're being called. We're, we're to rule and reign. You're with me on this. We're to rule and reign with him. He's training us to reign. You don't reign from a pauper position. Oh, glory to God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. Someone say I won't be lacking nothing. Say it again. Say I won't be lacking nothing. See it again, I'm going to be lacking nothing. Now, you're not going to get there in the natural. You're only going to get there by the supernatural. Shh. Hallelujah. Now, I'm putting this out there, not to get you all focused on the not lacking anything. We're going to talk about that some. But I'm putting this out there because I want to put a warning out there. you got to stay close. And I want to show you the position that God says guarantees you'll never be without. Psalm 34, verse, beginning with verse 9. Watch this. Y'all with me on this? Whew, glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Shanda rabaka kabo shande. Shakara ma shande. Shakara ma shande. Trust in the Lord, so shall you be established. Trust his prophet, so shall ye prosper. I know most of the time we hear that when they're ready to take an offering. I already took the offering. Don't worry about it. I'm telling you, it's time you begin to trust this word of God's end time superabundance. Put your faith on it. Begin to put a demand on heaven for it. I asked God, I asked God a few years ago, I said, why is it that so many of your people that tithe and give offerings aren't having an abundance? He says, because they don't give in faith. I said, well, it's Lord, but they're giving. He says, they're giving in obedience, but they're not giving in faith. They're obeying me because they know that's my word, but they're not really expecting me to do what I said I'd do. They give and they kind of hope. They're not putting their tie there going, hallelujah, windows of heaven be open. They're not sowing seed and going, you shall return 30, 60, 100 fold. You ain't got no choice. Don't you talk back to me now, offering. Huh? They're not giving with that expectation 
or the moment maybe they give it, maybe they say that in church when they're all wound up in the, in the intensity of the anointing. But as soon as they get out the door, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I, you know how many times, oh, Lord, help me here. Can I meddle for a second? You know how many times I'm having counseling with people and I'm talking with people? That's why I don't like doing counseling because my idea of a counseling is admit it and quit it. We're done. Most people don't want counseling. They want someone just to, to, to complain to. In fact, you want to solve that problem? They do that to you all the time. As soon as they start saying, say, just stop. Say, you know what? Stop, drop, and pray. Let's just take that to prayer. Let's just take that to the Lord. No, no, I got to tell you. You don't have to tell me. I can't solve your problem in the first place. Let's go tell God. Come on, there's two of us agreeing. But you know how many times I'll sit there and I'll give them the word and I'll give them the say, and then no sooner did I, God will provide all your needs. Yes, God will provide all my needs. My, no, no, my, my, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Never seen the righteous forsaken. You know, okay, okay. You got it? Yeah. Oh, I just don't know what I'm going to do though, Brother Steve. <laughs> You're going to stop talking like that? Amen. He said they don't give in faith. They're not really, really, they're kind of, kind of hoping, wishing, trying, but they're not really just saying, laying a, uh, just putting their foot down in the spirit, saying, you know what? I'm not moving. God's word is true, and I'm going to stay in here and press through till it happens. Yeah. Woo! I'm telling you, you'll be amazed. You start doing that, you start getting stubborn. Boy, you, those of you that were here, go oh, glory to God on Tuesday. We learned something about be strong in the Lord, didn't we? Come on, be strong. That wasn't no weak little word there. Come on. Woo! Unmovable. Violent. Kind of a Sunday. Say, well, that's just you, Pastor Steve. That's just your personality. I like a mellow church. You like a church that doesn't like the word. Come on, the Bible says from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by. Come on, we're to be strong. Someone say, we're to be strong. Say that, I'm going to be strong. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, oh my Lord. Come on, I got, I got to read that. It means to be harsh, be severe, be in a state of a high degree of intensity. Be hard. Don't be, be unwilling to hear information that will cause you to change your response. I'm not going to listen to your negative report. I'm not going to listen to the ungodly comment. I'm not going to listen to your doubt and unbelief. I'm going to be hard, severe. I'm standing on the word. I'm standing on the word. By God, not only shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory, I'm going to be blessed coming in and blessed going out. I'm going to lend and not borrow. I'm telling you, God's looking for some people that are just going to take the mantle and strike the waters and say, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Well, I tried. Don't stop. Don't back down. Don't give up. Don't quit. The Bible tells us that. If you faint not, if you faint not, if you faint not. God, I got to just say this. I got to say it. I got to say it. Say, if I don't quit, I can't fail. Huh? Don't wallow down, don't meddle, don't, don't get into some muck and mire of the ruts of the harvest where you're just grinding it out, just getting through day after day, week after week, and you've settled. That's what so many persons have. We just settled at the level that we're at. Well, it's okay. This is good enough. No, it's not good enough. We haven't reached America yet. We haven't reached the world yet. This is not about just you having enough comfort for yourself. This is about a lost and dying world. And we've got to do it. People say, well, somebody else will do it. I got bad news for you. I read an obituary. Somebody died. It's now up to you. (laughs) 
All right, I got to come for a landing here somewhere. I barely get started. Sean. Th- <laughs> Shh. Shanda it. Someone say, I'm going to lack nothing. Say it again. Say, I'm going to lack nothing. Say it again. Say, I'm going to lack nothing. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Shakara Mashande. We got to take the lid off of something right here. We got to take the lid off of something right there. We have got to get out of our concept of what we think is sufficient. Because most of us look at sufficiency as a level of survival. But the Bible says the God of all sufficiency will make grace abound to you. See, (laughs) glory to God. He says he's going to make you sufficient for every good work. Now, 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 come on. Wait, 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 wait. Someone say sufficient for every good work. How many of you can think of some good works you don't have the stuff to do right now? Come on. How many of you think some level of, of, of healings that you're not walking in yet? Come on, somebody. Amen. How many of you think of some, some helping the poor and the needy that you don't have the money quite yet to do? Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. How I many of you think some realm of penetration into the neighborhood that you don't have quite enough anointing yet? The God of all sufficiency will make grace abound to you unto every good, every, 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 every good work. Get the lid, lid off what you think is enough. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. If you have a hard time doing that, get around some bigger thinking people. One thing I love about hanging around with Pastor Al, he keeps stretching my thinking. I think I'm thinking big. I mean, we, we have some BHAGs, big, hairy, audacious goals. I don't know why they're hairy, but they're big and they're audacious. It doesn't sound very good, big, bold, audacious goals. So... so. So, so he just try, I'll, I'll come out with his big goal, and he'll just go, no, boom. And I'm going, okay, I wasn't thinking that big. Huh? Huh? Come on, amen. Ooh, I just feel, I know, I don't feel, I know in my spirit, God is waiting for a people that are just going to set out some big things, not wish pie dreams, but they're going to literally set it out, and they're going to put the, they're going to put their faith down, they're going to take the mantle, they're going to strike the waters, and they're going to say, God, I'm not merging until I see this happen. God's waiting for somebody that will expect the supernatural intervention to bring about the miraculous. Somebody say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I'm not going to be lacking anything. Yes, Holy Ghost. I got to say this. I got to say this. Stop letting your circumstances intimidate you. Talking to my son Benjamin this morning, today, we were driving around. He, he was asking God, why is it that many of the testimonies, financial miracle testimonies people get, is that they got to qualify for that home mortgage? Huh? And he said the Lord spoke to him and said, because that's all they're believing for. That's the level they're believing for. Oh, 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 if I could just qualify, praise God. Oh, I, they said I couldn't qualify, but oh, I qualified. What a miracle. That they got what they were believing for. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. You know what I love? I love going to Africa. I, 
got to go to Africa because my African brothers and sisters that are living in some of these countries where they kill you to be at when you're a Christian, they have to live the most radical faith life. I love being around them. They just walk. They just crazy. I mean, they'll walk into the airport and say, we're going to America. And I say, you got your money. No, I don't got no money. They say, the Lord's going to provide. They'll walk up. They'll, I mean, they're bold. They'll walk up and say, ma'am, at the ticket counter, ma'am, you need to give me a free ticket to America. Because the Lord is going to speak to you. I know people that do this. Y'all looking at me strange. I mean, they're so bold, I get nervous. And I see God provide. Like that man I told you about, I love this story, I tell it again, it's so funny. He drive that car with no brakes. Taking John Amanzini to a meeting in Africa. And big old hill right through the middle of town. Big old hill straight down and then straight up. And there's a major intersection at the bottom of the hill. And the light is red. And he's not slowing down. And John MC said, brother, it's a red light. You got to slow down. He said, no break, no break. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. And zoom right through. Didn't hit a car. He said, brother, you got to get it fixed. Oh, I haven't had a break for a long time. God clear the way every day. Somebody say, my God, my God. Shall, supply shall supply all my need. All Your need is not what you have to have to survive. Your need is what you have to have to be most effective. Yeah. Now, you didn't hear what I said. You might be able to survive with that 1972 super beetle with holes in the ground. But you're going to be effective for the kingdom in a nice car that you can give some people a ride in. That's not in the shop. Are y'all hearing me, somebody? You might survive in that two families living in a one-bedroom apartment. But in order to do and to house those that don't have a place to stay, you got to have yourself a house with some extra rooms. Am I talking to anybody here? Come on, we might be able to survive meeting in the Sterling building with little 14-foot ceilings. But if we're going to be most effective, I got my eyes on a place a whole lot bigger than this building. You say, why? Oh, you're just right. Not just to have a sanctuary, but to have a full-blown school and a school of ministry and a school of worship. Glory be to God. I want to even build a Holy Ghost full-blown gym like the size of L.A. Fitness, but nothing but praise music playing all the time. You'll have your praise aerobic classes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Shut up, my Why not? Come on, why not? Glory be to God. Well, you don't, know, you don't need all that. Yes, I do. Because we got to house a whole bunch of ministries. The Lord's already shown in our hearts. We're going to have whole, oh, Lord Jesus, I shouldn't be telling you all this, but I'm going to tell you anyways. We're going to have whole sections where we're going to have all these ministries, little ministries are doing things around the world that are here. We're going to have the offices for them, and they're going to be able to share secretary places and all this other stuff. We're going to be housing all them so they can pull together and pull their resources. Glory to God. Come on, it's time for apostolic ministry to be apostolic and empower the rest of the body to do its work. Huh? That's why we're going to go back on television worldwide. We're having a meeting in a few days. With what God opened the door, we're one of the top television producers in the country. I had someone walk up to me and say, well, are you, are you expecting the church people to pay for this? Not a dime. Because you couldn't afford it. Yet. Huh? 
My God, how you gonna get it? I ain't worried about it. My God, shall supply all my need. He didn't put it in my heart to do it and then not provide the money to do it. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody's got to get out there and take on this greasy, grace, false gospel message out there. Somebody's got to get in there. And not spend half the program milking people. If you're sending $8,500, God will bless your family. Oh, Husband, why don't you just love your wife and God will take care of your family. And you can keep the $8,500. My Lord, I got to give you one. I'm trying to get this one last scripture. That's it. Someone said the devil's a liar. Say it again. Say the devil's a liar. Shh. Huh? Pakarabo shahande. Shikarababa shahande. Come on. I shall not want. It's the greatest test. It's the greatest test. It's the greatest test. Shh. Shh. Shakar. I just pray. I, I. Come on, let him put it inside of your spirit. A divine expectancy. It's time to take the lid off. It's time to take, I'm talking to somebody here. Maybe this message is just for one person here tonight. But if one person get a hold of this, we could change Dallas Fort Worth. Come on, somebody lift your hands to God.